vibes. I've been on a vibe kinda hard to describe. I'm in between, I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life. I'm never so packed for the stack, never lied on the back. Got a bag from the way that I write it. Queen looking Tyson. Who that I survived through an 80 to the house, then I hit it to the sky jumps. Haters on a tyrant. Microphones that you have to talk into or don't talk into. Okay. Um, uh, no, you, you, it, it comes right out the front. You can hear me? Mm hmm. <clears throat> kind of describe what this ride is and the feature and all that. All right. Hi, everyone. Sorry for the uh, horrible intro. Uh, this is going to be a double tested concept. First off, we're testing the new Zwift club feature, which I created a club, and just as we test it and see how it all works, we just opened it up to people on our Discord. And so I see about, I don't know, 20 people or so, no, 10 people from the Discord who are going to join us. Ari just messaged me, said, how do I get to group ride? Can someone message him and tell him you just start riding? Yeah. And then it'll take you there. Can you text him? Text him that. Tell him he's going to miss it. Hopefully there's enough uh, time. But anyways, so we're testing that concept. Um, and then also we just wanted to do a group ride. 
with some people from Discord. Eventually, we'd like to start doing fairly regular group rides on these kind of more easy days. Today's a, I had a, my long ride with Ari, I'm sorry, my long run with Ari, and it was pretty challenging. We're not just doing them straight anymore. Uh, today was 30 minutes at upper aerobic pace, so that ended up being 342 per kilometer, and then a couple minutes easy, toss on the faster shoes, and then we had four times six minutes at uh, like the anaerobic threshold, which today was around 315 per kilometer, and then a 6K cool down. So it ended up being 26K. So this is truly just a nice, easy recovery ride. Uh, and so that's what we're doing today. Just testing a couple of ideas, seeing, uh, you'll see Talos, the mad scientist, over to my left here with 10 different screens going, a million cords. I'm not in my normal Viking spot. I can feel the difference in floor height. It's really bugging me. Uh, <clears throat> got a green screen behind me. I can't see anything, by the way. I can't see questions or anything yeah, yeah, like that. Good. So I don't think it's a good idea to put the screens over there like that. Because then I'm looking over there at the screens. You know what I mean? Is this, is this from you? It's a Discord. Well, thanks to everyone on Discord for uh, joining in with us. I do want to keep it super chill, super recovery, because I am pretty tired. Uh, Lokesh on the Discord asks, how I'm doing and greetings from India. Greetings to you as well, Lokesh. Uh, I'm doing good, I'm tired. It's to the end of second week straight of hard training. Some of the highest volume I've ever done, but also at the same time, some of the highest intensity. Not absolute intensity, but in terms of volume of intensity and so you know I'm not I'm not crazy young anymore so I definitely have to be somewhat uh, cognizant of that fact you know I am I am trying to do I would imagine similar program to you know Gustav for instance who's eight years younger than I am and so I can feel it building up. I'm not in danger territory at the moment, but definitely uh, getting close to needing a bit of a recovery period. So originally we had intended to do a half marathon next weekend, but to be honest with you, I'm not that interested. I'm a full-fledged triathlete now, all in. Only want to do triathlons. Just because I haven't really done any specific pure running preparation. I do think I could come close to breaking my half marathon PB, but I don't really uh, really care to test that or not. So that's a long-winded way of uh, answering your question. I'm doing all right. <clears throat> well, Kesh also asks, would you consider doing an extreme triathlon? I certainly would consider it. I certainly will do one at some point. I don't know if now's the time to be thinking about it or doing it. During the pandemic, when everything got canceled, I actually kind of thought that would have been a great opportunity to do something extreme. And I wanted to do uh, Badwater 135 and I tried pulling strings and stuff to get myself in and the race director was like extremely uh, anti pulling strings to get in and 
I wasn't able to get in, and it didn't matter anyway because then it ended up getting canceled. Uh, that would have probably been a really dumb decision anyway uh, to run 135 miles with no training. Uh, for, to do it in the middle of the summer in uh, Death Valley. But I do have interest in extreme things. So one of these days, probably not anytime soon, but maybe five to eight years from now, hopefully, if my body allows it, we will uh, do some extreme triathlons. Though Iron Man is very extreme, by the way. Hmm. Next time we do this, so uh, top it. Mm -hmm. I would, I would just live stream like a workout or something because I can't mm -hmm. really interact with the Discord people because you know I got too many things going on all at once. See those very much. Got it. All right. Tell us how your swim workout. Three times fifteen hundred meters went this week. From Alexander Albuquerque, a familiar name. Um, swimming. Woo, where do we start? Where do we start? Swimming is the most fascinating of all sports. As someone who, you know, from a pretty young age. Running came naturally. It was pretty basic. Work hard, you'll do well. Swimming, well, I've tried to figure it out for a decade. And I don't feel like I'm any closer to figuring it out now as I was 10 years ago. So, uh, with a new coach, we call Eden, and then of course my, my swim coach, Justin Slade, uh, he, his philosophy undoubtedly is the one thing common to all great swimmers is feel for the water. What does that mean? That's a very esoteric concept. It means they have a relationship with the water. It means they don't fight the water. Because they have a relationship with it, they know how to use the water. And basically, I believe, from day one when I started trying to swim, I did the complete opposite of develop a relationship. I just tried to muscle the water. I wasn't gentle with it, I wasn't kind with it. I thought of the water as basically whether, you know, it was, it was overt or not, the water is trying to kill me. And if I don't fight for my survival, I will drown. And so, you know, I spent 10 years trying to get gains in the water by muscling it, by fighting it. And I developed neural pathways for a decade uh, in that direction. And so, <clears throat> Coach Justin's contribution to the, to the knowledge is, dude, you gotta just relax. You kinda gotta go back to the beginning and actually learn to feel the water, learn to be gentle, learn to hold on to it as opposed to <clears throat> look for, you know, violent aggression against the water and then hold it very gently and use it to propel yourself forward. And Coach McCall's contribution is, well, as a byproduct of having tried to muscle the water like crazy for a decade, I've also gone extremely anaerobic uh, across like every single swim. And so I've pushed my swimming system into an insane anaerobic uh, level. So whenever I swim, even when I swim easy, I pretty well produce the energy from like mainly glycolysis uh, just because I'm the system that you you engage regularly 
is the system you engage regularly. So, this is an extremely long-winded answer to, uh, I swam 1500s way better. I didn't work hard at all on the last 1500, which was just under 22 minutes. My lactate was 1.0, which my lactate's usually higher than that, like sleeping on the couch. So, you know, what does that mean for development? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it'll pay dividends in terms of energy use in the water. Knowing what I know now, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I was swimming, doing races, Ironman races at five millimole of blood lactate, which explains why a weak swimmer, the swim takes so much more out of, I believe, than a strong swimmer um, for them to swim decent paces for themselves, relative to themselves. So, I think we hit that, hit that answer. <laughs> I need to turn the fan on, I'm getting hot. Yeah, just turn it there. More, please. Thank you. Huh, the effect of heat. I literally did this ride. I rode yesterday for two hours and 15 minutes, averaging 245 watts, mainly in the TT position, on this exact same bike and power meter. My average heart rate was 97. Now my heart rate's 108 at 220. But I also ran 26K this morning. We got, uh, yeah boy, one, two, three, says, cool setup you got there. Always wonder how your pulse can be so low. Maybe have a comment on that. Uh, heart rate, Talbot and I tried to highlight this in a video, I don't know, maybe it was two years ago, where we climbed Mount Lemmon together and it was a race and I had to keep my heart rate under, I think it was 105. And Talbot could literally suck wheel the whole time and all he had to do was sprint by me at the end and it should be an easy win because he could have unlimited heart rate. And his heart rate was like 190. Mine was like an average of 103. And I just rode away from him. And it's not because, well, there is obviously a fitness component to heart rate. But the vast majority of heart rate, uh, natural set point anyway, it's just genetics. And so, you know, I ran with Ari today, this morning, and my heart rates were doing literally the same workout. In fact, his lactate is lower than mine because he's a better runner, and yet his heart rate's 20 beats higher, lactate lower, therefore systemically it is likely less taxing. Yet his heart rate is 20 beats higher at the same rate. So it's just mainly genetics. There's really not much you can talk about between people with regards to heart rate. Of course, just this, this week really, I started to see my heart rate starting to come down a bit at particular intensity levels and uh, I do believe that internally, like within a person, shows a form of training effect. But that's really the only, in my opinion, useful feature of heart rate is to uh, observe training effect over time. And it can definitely also be a sign of uh, overtraining and can show perhaps before major problems occur, like injury, that uh, perhaps you should back off a bit uh, just because there are certain trends that will show themselves in heart rate.
uh, follow-up question from Yeah Boy as we're on the on the topic. He says, "Does this mean that you never train or analyze heart rate because it is so inconsistent?" And no, I, I use heart rate quite a bit for, at the very least, on the premise that it's better to have the data and not need it than want it and not have it. And so the more data I can amass, I had a friend in the past years and years ago who really tried to get me to use heart rate. And I was like, I just don't care. I don't care to use heart rate. And now, you know, six or seven years later, I wish I had all that heart rate data so that I could go back and analyze. Yeah, I was pushing X wattage, but what was my heart rate? It also allows you to compare, you know, between meters. I've used probably 10 different power meters over the years. Uh, it's hard to know when I was doing my best biking. If all you do is use power because of the fact that maybe one meter was reading 30 watts less or 30 watts more than another meter. Those types of things would show themselves in the heart rate data. Wilster asked what the workout is on the bike today. No workout today. Super chill. Just to test the concept here, see how all this technology works. We have done a live stream before, um, but Talbot is getting much more sophisticated in his, his knowledge these days. And so, and I judge that by how many screens he has in front of him and how many wires are hanging around this training room. And so, you'll also notice this zip data is like beautiful, beautiful uh, screen record. And I don't know how he did it, but some way he's figured that out too. So, a bunch of stuff that we're making sure uh, works correctly before we kind of, what do you say, push it out. We didn't really advertise this or anything. It's just other than on our Discord. So, uh, Watt, Watt Banane, Banana, Watt Banana? Yeah. He asks, or she, how did you like Germany from your stay at the Tri Battle Royale? I loved it. I had a great time. I mean, I think it's pretty clear well, maybe it's not clear, but it's clear in my mind that that experience had a great impact on me. I got to have uh, dinner a couple times with Jan and his team. Jan's the best. People forget, I think, because it's been so long, but Jan is the reigning world champ. Jan is the one who's, who's up the bar. Jan is the one we're all trying to beat. Let's not take anything away from Team Norway. Undoubtedly, they're the up and comers. But Jan is the best. And I had the privilege to observe Jan in his own event with his whole team around and observe that process and observe how much of a professional he is and how, really, prior to Team Norway, in my opinion, uh, Jan is like a different different level than all of us in terms of professionalism, in terms of his approach to hiring basically experts in every field to advise, to give knowledge, insight, etc. And I don't think there was really anyone else doing that to the extent that he was and is. So it was an amazing experience. If you're talking about just the little town, um, it was also wonderful, beautiful. I would love to go back again sometime. 
Uh, heck, I think Jan should do it again, to be honest with you. He only held the record for, what was it, four months? I think I think that calls for uh, Tri Battle 2.0. Maybe we can get get a couple more people involved. I'd be down. So maybe you can relay that to, to Jan. This is a cool question. I didn't know this, but Triathlon Pastor comments and says, Dan Lorraine, Jan's coach, says in an interview that he will always choose heart rate over power if he had to choose. What do you think about that? <clears throat> Prior to using lactate, I would have said, no chance. I would never do that. But actually, I would say lactate uh, probably agrees more with heart rate than it does with power. And the smart people, the, the physiologists, I'm sure, could explain that uh, better. I don't, I don't have an explanation for that. But in my testing so far, you know, internal, internal perception, for instance, uh, last week I did a upper aerobic bike ride outside and I targeted 300 watts because it felt like it was, you know, pretty easy upper aerobic. My heart rate, um, well, long story short, my heart rate was more indicative of what the lactate was than the power, than my internal perception. And so I had to ease off in order to bring the lactate down uh, to like 288. And heart rate actually didn't vary too, too much, but um, Certainly had I just used heart rate right from the beginning instead of power, I probably wouldn't have overshot the, uh, the upper aerobic limit. So, like anything, there's a time and a place for everything. Better to have the data and not need it. Sometimes my heart rate is like crazy weird. Like today, Today I did some anaerobic threshold intervals and my quote unquote anaerobic threshold heart rate is around 142. And I did 24 minutes of work at anaerobic threshold uh, validated through lactate and my max heart rate for the whole session was 140. So I think a sign of astute, astute athlete, astute coach, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is understanding that these are all just tools. And the fun part, the the art, artful part, is utilizing all of these different tools at our disposal to paint, you know, a beautiful athletic picture and to make it to the start line in the best shape you can be without having gotten injured in the process. And they're all valuable tools and they all have a time and a place. What is your resting heart rate on an off day? We've got a lot of heart rate, heart rate interest. Fascinating. It's fascinating that people are interested in heart rate when I went approximately like eight years and couldn't care less about heart rate. So that's kind of fascinating. But what is your resting heart rate? Um, my whoop, I believe actually, I have it actually right here. Um, I can tell you what my ranges are. Last 30 day range, my resting heart rate has been pretty tight between 46 and 49 resting heart rate range. So, what, which is kind of fascinating because my exercise heart rate is extremely low, yet my resting heart rate is not crazy low. Like, I know a lot of people who have a lower resting heart rate than myself, yet the moment we start exercising, their heart rate will skyrocket above my own. So. Which once again, you know, um, 
for instance, if all athletes, if all the pros only talked about heart rate, we literally would never be able to get a sense of where you stand because, well, I probably have the lowest heart rate of anyone. And so then you would think, oh, you're gonna win if it's just heart rate. And that's not the case. I, a great example was I did CBR World Cup uh, back in 2017 or 18. And they, we all flew to the Carson Velodrome and there was 10 trainers set up in the middle of the Velodrome. And it was really cool because they were all calibrated. We all had the same heart rate monitor. And I was racing dudes, same output, uh, side by side. And one dude's heart rate's 190 and mine's 140. And he ended up winning. <laughs> so, you know, it's hard to talk between people. Dresney is in pain. Come on, buddy. We're almost there. How, how much further we got? Almost halfway. Stick with it. Do I think the seven hour mark, mark will be broken this year? These guys are hardcore. It's a little bit intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Because Jan was intimidating. And now you've got this new, new crop of guys who are like, might as well be like, borderline well-educated sport physiologists. They're so knowledgeable about what's going on under the hood. And so it'll be tough. You know, I, my first question, of course, is what, what are the rules? If they just draft, you know, the whole time on the bike, then yeah, absolutely, you can break seven hours. Um, <clears throat> I even thought it would be a funny media stunt to ask uh, Bill from the Challenge Daytona, or now it's called Clash Daytona races, if we could hire a semi truck one day and I would do the swim and then I would draft a semi truck for 180K with like an 80 tooth chain ring and I'd go like I'd be pretty confident that I could go like 50 kilometers an hour, you know, off very low power, drafting a semi truck around the Daytona Speedway. And then obviously it would be like an open marathon, which I'd be confident I could break 230 on. And so if that's how they're gonna break seven, then that doesn't really say much. I think, word on the street anyway, is Christian doesn't want to do it under those circumstances of, you know, novelty. He wants to do it legit. And so my answer is, if anyone can do it, it's Christian Blumenfeld. So uh, he's got the right attitude. He's got the right team. He's tough as nails. I'm going to go with 60-40. 60% chance he does, 40% chance he doesn't this year. <clears throat> Who is your coach? Mikal Eden, Gustav's brother. Do you know your cardiac stroke volume and ejection fraction? That's the first time I even ever heard that, that second term there. So the answer to that is no. Wow, I can't believe all the heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your heart rate at 300 watts? Varies a lot day to day. Some days, well, that story I told a moment ago, last Sunday, I averaged 300 watts for 90 minutes outside, and my average heart rate was 109. So, in the TT position. 
So there you go. With me call being your coach now, probably switching to a more polarized model instead of threshold model, do you already notice any differences? That's an interesting question. I, if you go back and watch my YouTube videos from this time last year, I don't think anyone was doing a more polarized model than I was. I was doing nothing but anaerobic intervals and no middle upper thresh upper aerobic threshold intervals. I was riding at some point I got heavily indoctrinated into the idea and concepts that you need to push your uppers as high as you can. And that's all that matters. And so that's what I tried. You know, I could push 400 watts for an hour, no problem. In fact, I would go usually January, February, March, where I wouldn't do a single interval under 400 watts. And then I would do all my easy stuff, 200, 220 to 250 watts. Nothing in between. In fact, on my wall, I had written that basically all power outputs, all intervals between basically 260 and 370 were low value, that you shouldn't spend time at those outputs. So I can't think of any more polarized training that you could do for triathlon than that. And I did the same principles on the run and the swim. So now working with Mikal, what's funny, the comical part actually really to show how ignorant I am is that I haven't done really a single interval since we started working together above 370. A few, approximately I would estimate 20 minutes in the last six months I've spent over that wattage. All of my time is now spent in the low value range, which is mind boggling really. Uh, how if, if the way I was training uh, in my mind was correct, then in, in reality, how horrible I was training, how ignorantly I was training. And that's hard to wrap my head around, but so far, Ironman Florida, off of no more than six weeks of training with, with Coach Mikal, and Indian Wells 70.3, which we literally didn't do any anaerobic threshold work for, are my two best races, my two best performances in terms of uh, uh, actual output. I was reading those. You read them? Yeah. Okay. Tal was trying to take his phone back. There's a good one to Discord I'm going to go to. Oh, go to Discord then. I don't know how to control these things. All right. Do you do stretching or yoga after the bike or running sessions? How important it, is it for you to stay flexible to prevent injury? Um, I do stretching, hot tub, after just about every single session. I would say if I had to choose for me something, uh, uh, a recovery practice that is most valuable, I would choose over everything else, hot tub and stretch after. That's what I would choose. But I am a crazy tight person. And if I don't take care of my range of motion, which is already very poor, I mean, I will get to a point where like I, I'm like trapped in my own body because my muscles are so crazy short and tight. So for me, that's of massive value. Can you toss me that towel for a second? Please and thanks. Thank you. What else? 
else we got here? Lots of great questions. Thanks, everyone. Keep them, keep them coming. Did Ari make it on? Yeah, he's in. Oh, he's in. Good man, good man, good man. Uh, Chas Blood, have you read Beckin's article about double threshold days with an X element at the end of the day? I, what's funny is the day that article came out, I think like five people forwarded it to me. And so I'm not the coach anymore. I don't do coaching anymore. I coached myself for my entire career up until uh, after the Collins Cup this year or last year. I had advisors over the years, of course, but I wrote all the training. <clears throat> and now I write none of the training. So, and I love it. So do I do double threshold days and have I done them? Absolutely. Many, many double threshold days Especially if you consider swimming uh, with the knowledge that I have now of what was happening under the hood in my swimming, I would say almost every day was a threshold day in swimming. Uh, just because I would over swim every single workout, basically trying to hit numbers that in my mind were somewhat acceptable to hit. And so now though, on average, I would say coach has me doing three double threshold days a week across. Usually it is a swim threshold and either a bike or a run threshold, uh, three days a week. Michael Chavez asks, are we doing a discord meetup in Oceanside? You'll have to talk to the boss. I don't know, Talbot. What do you think, bud? We'll see. Probably. I'm sure I'll see you, Michael. What else we got here? With all your heavy load training, what's your calorie intake for the day? Or do you even count? And is it 50-50 protein and carbs? Or depending how you feel. As Talbot said to me one time, I'm on the seafood diet. I see the food and I eat it. And I, it's fascinating for me to observe that, you know, I take a recovery period. I don't gain any weight. I don't lose any weight. I start training crazy hard, significant increase in volume. I don't gain any weight. I don't lose any weight. There was only one time in my whole career where I started losing weight. And it was kind of because I was doing it consciously. At the time, I blamed it on doing vegetarian and veganism. But that wasn't the, the reason. The reason was <clears throat> I got kind of infatuated, mainly due to insecurity of being beaten by Patrick Lange in Kona on the run and knowing that he weighed probably 15 to 20 pounds less than me. And I got insecure about that. As I know many runners get insecure sometimes uh, when they're beaten by a smaller or a lighter runner and they think, oh, well maybe, maybe I need to be lighter. But that was the only time I ever lost weight. I don't think I need to lose any weight to win. I, I think there's so many other problems. I can win a major race at 165 pounds. I'm not, uh, I will never tinker with that stuff. Again, that's where I'm strong. I need to be a good cyclist. I need to have big power production ability because I'm never gonna be able to swim on the feet of, you know, Jan Fredino, et cetera, et cetera. And so I have to rely on having a bit of, a bit more muscle mass, I believe, in order to, you know, produce that power to bridge the gap. 
So I don't know if I answered any question there, but I don't count calories. I don't think about ratios. After my workouts, Ari has gotten me into this, which I believe was lacking. Right after my workouts, I I have a you know a, a re replacement drink like with carb, protein, and fat, like right after. But that's the only real practice that I've begun uh, to do that I really believe in. So. Other than that, um, no, I don't think about that stuff too much. Fortunately, I'm not saying that's going to be the common uh, position on that. Will you be sharing the link to the Zwift Club, Talbot? Will Zwift. we be sharing it? Zwift is still working. On Zwift the is feature. so Zwift. This this feature is not. Is it a, is it available? It's available, right? It's available. But the best way it's to get still, notified of the rides is if you're in Discord and we're going to share them with you. Yeah, rides. so I think the problem right now is with this club feature is it can only have like 100 people or something. So we don't really want to share the link and then it fills up in a second and we can't have as many people as we would like. I believe Zwift is going to uh, increase that soon but if you want to get in on these rides if we keep doing them um we shared it on discord and uh well we had 12 people join us which i'm very grateful for but uh, we certainly could use it for a few more faces so uh and next time i don't know if i'll live stream it just so i can communicate yeah. with the b-wall and zwift not on Zwift, on Discord. Yeah. Luis Dono says, Gustav has said he will be hiding his power data from now on. He said, some new ideas they are testing. They want to keep secret. Will you keep your stuff public? Or would Mikhail ask you to not post certain stuff? I knew that was coming, Luis. I literally said this to everyone. Talbot's here. Ari's here. Uh, Aaron. Christian's removed his power. And undoubtedly, Gustav was removing his soon. Why? Well, because I'm analyzing the, the crap out of these guys. <laughs> and I'm sure everyone else is too. For instance, Gustav yesterday did six times 30 minutes, LT1, because I know what he's doing, like I know what zone he's targeting, and he's doing it at 255 watts at 7,500 feet. So I pretty well can see exactly what he's doing, exactly the numbers he's hitting, etc., etc. And yeah, I get why you would not want to really share that you don't want to be the coach of your competitors because soon enough, all of the competitors are going to be on this program of hitting the zones properly. And he doesn't want to be that coach for everyone. So I get it. I get why I took it down. Um, I don't share my data. I mean, I share it on YouTube, but he was literally sharing every workout on Strava and I was creeping every single one of those workouts analyzing every single interval so I think he's smart to take it down because now I'm in the dark now I don't know what he's doing um, and I don't know if he's worried about me but he might be worried about oh what's his name Jan Verdino or someone like that so uh, I think it was a good idea. Um, Harry Illustrations says, what's your current full day of eating routine look like? Um, well, I'm on the seafood diet. I see food and I eat it. So I wake up, I have cereal, 
a couple of coffees. I go swimming. I come back. I try and have a protein shake. I even bring one in the car. Protein with carbs and fat. And I have lunch. Many different meals. I like like eggs and uh, bagels. You know, carbs and protein. Uh, then I usually do my afternoon workout. I take 100 grams plus of carbs an hour. Pretty well in every session. I strive. Right now I'm obviously down. I'm not even at 50 grams at the moment. Now I'm at 50 grams. Uh, then I have another protein shake. Then I usually have something fairly light on the stomach. Like for instance, right before this ride, I had uh, just a big bowl of noodles and uh, like seasoning. So fat and carbs again. And then dinner, Erin makes great dinner. She's a great cook. <clears throat> Last night we had uh, chicken parm. Uh, she's vegetarian, so we had it with fake chicken. I don't know what it is. It tasted like chicken. I don't know. It was good. <clears throat> and uh, that's kind of the pattern. I just kind of repeat that every day. I don't really think about much. And then I snack like crazy. Massive, massive, massive. 2,000 calories a day worth of snacks, probably. Um, Michael Chavez says, any videos coming out with strength training? I am not really doing any at the moment, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I have a shoulder routine for shoulder mobility, whom uh, is a friend of ours, who Aaron and I, who does is a, is a strength trainer. And I was actually thinking about uh, maybe seeing if she'd be interested to make a upper body swimming mobility video for our YouTube because I do I do see a value in that for me mobility wise um, so maybe we'll do that in the future uh, Danish 1713 asks about all the different shoes I've tried the last while and do I have any favorites um, I basically do my Ironman intervals in the Nike Alpha Flies, and I do my high-end 70.3 intervals in the Asics Meta Speed Racers or something they're called, <clears throat> and I'll do some easy runs in the Nikes too, and then I do... Uh, also a bit in the Hoka <coughs> Mach 4s. So, and uh, the Puma, Puma, what are they called? Deviate, I think. I like those as well. So, those are my four favorite shoes at the moment. Meet Low 54 asks if the Zwift group is full already, and my answer is no, but we also haven't posted a link or anything about it. Uh, Liz ben Benoit says, honestly, I think both Gustav and Christian only have each other to worry about. I doubt any of them is concerned with Jan ever or even. Well, what's funny, and maybe I shouldn't share this, but... Um, after 70.3 Worlds, I messaged Mikal and congratulated him and told him to tell Gustav, great work. And, uh, you know, I said, are you guys going celebrating tonight? And they said, until we beat Jan, we will never celebrate. So to think that they don't respect Jan and how great Jan is, <laughs> is uh, certainly not the case. Jan is the one to beat, even this year. And the beauty of this year is Jan knows it. 
Jan knows if he can win this year, he will go down forever as the greatest of all time. So the stakes have never been higher for Jan. Um, any advice on avoiding injuries as a beginner runner? Uh, listen to your body always. Better to be a little cautious or the workout be a little too easy than even slightly too hard. And I would say that's true not just for a beginner, but for everyone. Because you can't win a race if you're not on the start line. So uh, it's better to get to a race a little undertrained than slightly overtrained. What's your average daily training peaks TSS during a build phase? Well, right now it is my average 190. I don't know what the ramp rate is on that, but I'm sitting at 190 average. And I believe that's over the course of, they calculate that over 30 or maybe 60 days, I can't remember. So that means I'm averaging over 200 strain a day at the moment, TSS. What's the music playlist these days? Yes, strictly Ari's Spotify. Everyone needs to go and follow Ari on Spotify. And even if you're not listening, just put it on repeat and keep your phone playing it uh, to rack up those dollars, rack those checks up from Spotify. TC Miles asks if I think I'll be able to perform better in St. George as opposed to Kona. I'll be honest with you. I know I can perform well in St. George. I've also performed well in Kona. Uh, it feels like it was a lifetime ago now. It wasn't like a great performance internally, but I mean, I did finish on the podium. Um, I'm most excited to go to Kona though, because I am literally inhabiting an entirely different system, <laughs> uh, different training method. I have much better sense of nutrition. And so I actually think when I go to Kona, it's going to feel like my first time because I will be in such better shape for Ironman and I will have such better grasp of nutrition. So St. George is fun. I know I can do well there. I've done well there every iteration of that race other than my first time in 2014. Kona, I'm excited to go there and uh, do much better than ever. And S. Jones asks, lactate question. What is your lab measured aerobic and anaerobic threshold? Practically, what are you targeting on the lactate plus in training for those thresholds? That's a great question. So far, my views on this topic are the lactate is a great way to be in the ballpark most of the time. And at the end of the day, training is about consistency and being in the ballpark as often as you can without overtraining yourself, without getting injured, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have not measured the zones in a lab, mainly due to time constraints. Um, as well as availability. I don't even really know where I would go for that around here. But we did do our own lactate tests across all three disciplines given to me by my coach. And um, we determined my zones to be very much like any other athlete, I believe, you know, fighting for the top in triathlon, in ultra triathlon, 
which was about 1.2 to 1.5 for the aerobic threshold and 2.3 to 2.7 on the anaerobic threshold. And so in training, I've seen the results in my racing already in Florida and in Indian Wells. And so I have faith in the program and the process. And so I'm cool being on the low end of those zones always um, so that I can just log more time, more stimulus to improve with the least amount of risk. So today on my anaerobic threshold intervals, I hit 2.4 on the first and then I sped up slightly because I was feeling pretty good, 2.9 and I said that's too much. And I came back down, 2.3, and I held it there. And that was the workout. Uh, this system requires a lot of discipline. What would you tell someone that is in coached tri training for a year and a half, 20, and trying to become a pro? Uh, you, gotta, you gotta love what you do. You gotta love to learn. You have to be open and receptive to the world around you, the people around you. Um, someone doesn't know everything, okay? And if someone tries to tell you they know everything, well, you should run away. But people know a lot. And so surround yourself with people who admit they don't know everything, but want to help you learn and become better and improve and are willing to learn with you um, and enjoy that process because you're a puzzle. Nobody knows how to train you. Um, we're all different. We all have different strengths, weaknesses, mental gifts, challenges, etc., etc. And so each person is unique and a different puzzle. And so enjoy that journey of learning the puzzle of yourself and learning how to get the most out of yourself and the people along the way who you'll meet to help you get the most out of yourself. And with that attitude, it doesn't really matter if you achieve your goal, your external goal, because you will get so much more satisfaction internally. Uh, by just following that system through to its limits. And then the knowledge you get from following that, you can apply to every other aspect of your life. And it'll make you a better person, in my opinion. <laughs> Kamatro says, why are you not in a TT position? Great question. I've already spent nine hours this week in the TT position, though. And I've got four tomorrow. So I think I'm allowed. But to be honest with you, I would be in the TT position right now. But Talbot made me do the uprights. But you're right. You are right. TT from now on. You know that. Huh? Harry Illustration says, do you think that early 20s is a late age to start working on becoming a pro triathlete? Come on, Harry. I started at 20, well, how old was I? 22? I mean, I didn't go pro until I think I was 25. So uh, I am certainly don't think 20 is too late. In fact, 20 is perfect because at 30, you're going to start coming into your mental and physical strength and you'll have 10 years of great experience by that time. And uh, that's what you need. Well, that's the end of the bike, isn't it, Talbot? 
lots, lots of chat about heart rate and lactate and all that. Maybe tell everyone that there's lots of talk on the science channel on Discord. Yeah, I mean, if you want to keep talking, I'm on Discord. I'm pretty addicted to it, I'm not gonna lie. I gotta limit it a little bit. But I'm on there all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, so you can join me on there. There's a lot more great questions. I got a swim to get to here, but I'll answer a couple more. How many hours per day do you work out? Last year at this time, like 15. <laughs> this year, 25 to 28. Uh, any advice to racing on the big island? Nutrition is huge. And in Kona, I think you'll enjoy your experience and get the most out of yourself if you hold yourself back, hold yourself back. And then when you make that final turn in the energy lab with about seven miles to go, if you're like, all right, I've been holding myself back all day and I feel like a million bucks, then you could smash those final seven miles. But I've never met a person to ever do it. So you'll be the first. <sighs> And Dresnia, thanks for coming, man. Appreciate it. Donovan's got his Iron Man in December. Any key training tips? That's a complex, complex questions. A lot of tips. Uh, I'm a mental person. Like, first and foremost, you got to make sure your mind is right. So you have to enjoy the process, have fun, and keep an open mind to learning. And there are no bad experiences. They're all just experiences. And so uh, soak them in, the good and the bad aspects, and learn from them. And so if you have that attitude, you will do great in your, your Ironman. All right, people, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Thank you to everyone on Discord for uh, joining us. I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna eat some food, get back on a seafood diet, and uh, I got a big threshold swim, 12 times 200. That I gotta meet Ari at the pool at in uh, an hour and a half, so. Bye everybody, thanks for tuning in.